Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, the FAA is awarding grants to universities to advance drone operations. The Army unit begins testing Arcturus UAS and GAASI Fly Sky Guardian RPA above Southern California. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow announced the FAA is awarding $2.6 million in research, education, and training grants to universities that make up the agency's Air Transportation Center of Excellence for UAS. The grants are designed to advance specific goals and projects. The University of North Dakota, the University of Alaska Fairbanks, New Mexico State University, Kansas State University, Mississippi State University, The Ohio State University, Oregon State University, and Drexel University will be receiving grants, and Kansas State University and Oregon State University will both be serving as the lead universities. The grants will cover UAS flight data collection and analysis phase two, UAS safety case development, process improvement and data collection, as well as developing risk-based training and standards for operational approval and assurance, and establishing UAS pilot proficiency requirements. Now let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. The U.S. Navy awarded Boeing a contract modification for three additional MQ-25 unmanned aerial refueling aircraft, bringing the total number of aircraft Boeing is manufacturing to seven. This $87.7 million modification exercises options for three MQ-25 system demonstration test articles and was an option identified in the original $805 million contract for four aircraft awarded in August of 2018. The FAA's next-gen program selected Virginia Tech Mid-Atlantic Aviation Partnership and Griffiths International Airport as test site participants for Phase 2 of the Unmanned Aircraft Traffic Management Pilot Program. UPP Phase 2 will showcase capabilities and services that support high-density UAS operations, including remote ID services and public safety operations. UPP Phase 1, which was a collaborative effort between NASA, FAA, UAS test sites, and their industry partners, was completed in August of 2019. UAV Navigation signed a collaboration agreement with Abionica Solutions to achieve their customer system certification. One of the biggest challenges to UAV providers and operators in this market is the European regulation of civil category-specific drones. The European Aviation Safety Agency intends to publish this new regulation in July of 2020, and it will be mandatory in all EU countries from July of 2021. It is expected to lay the foundation for a change in the global regulatory trend, especially among other aviation safety agencies and Western regions such as the FAA. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, we're moving around programs, resources, and schedules for the sake of efficiency and capability. For the time being, we will be alternating Airborne Unmanned with our newest program, Airborne Flight Training, dedicated to the world of aviation education and the community around it. If you would like to check it out, you can find last week's episode on our YouTube page or tune in next Wednesday. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. The U.S. Army has begun evaluating tactical unmanned aircraft systems intended to replace the RQ-7 Shadow Drone, which has been in service since the early 2000s. On April 7th, the 1st Armored Brigade Combat Team, 1st Infantry Division, conducted the first soldier-operated flight of the Arcturus Jump 20, a 210-pound aircraft with an 18-foot wingspan capable of vertical takeoff and landing. Arcturus Jump 20 is quieter than the Shadow, and its VTOL capability lessens the workload, as a runway isn't needed. Built by California-based Arcturus UAV, the aircraft has a total payload capacity of 60 pounds, including fuel and an endurance of up to 15 hours. Its VTOL capability is provided by four engines located on wing spars, and it can be converted to catapult launch as well. Over the next five months, the soldiers will operate the Jump 20 as a replacement for the RQ-7 Shadow, performing similar tasks. The Army will follow CDC and DOD guidelines during the evaluations to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. 
as part of a joint flight demonstration with NASA. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems Incorporated flew its Sky Guardian remotely piloted aircraft in the skies above Southern California. Sky Guardian took off from GAASI's Gray Butte Flight Operations Facility near Palmdale, California, and flew through the Southern California NAS towards Yuma, Arizona, while being operated by a remote pilot based at Gray Butte. Situational awareness of air traffic near the UAS was provided by the GAASI Develop, Detect, and Avoid system, which includes a traffic alert and collision avoidance system used in manned aircraft that fly in simple airspace. The DAAS can also provide detection and tracking capability of any nearby aircraft which may not have active transponders, thanks to being equipped with an air-to-air do-regard radar. Since 2014, GAASI and NASA have worked together to prove the safety of flying large UAS in the National Airspace System. System. And that wraps up this week's Airborne Unmanned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. I'll see you right back here Friday for an episode of Airborne Unlimited.